Do you need to update a table with millions of rows but don't want to wait hours for it to complete? Learn how to update your data much faster in this video. I'm using a dump of data into MySQL from Stack Overflow for this video, but the concepts should work on other SQL databases. Here's what the data looks like. It's a table of comments from Stack Overflow. We can run a quick select count on the table and see that it has about 2 million records. What do we want to update? Let's say we want to do some string replacement and replace any occurrence of this QUOT value with a single quote. We can run a quick select statement to see the number of records that will be updated, which is about 257,000 rows here. Let's update this data. The first method is to write a simple update statement. We'll update all rows in the table, so we don't add a WHERE clause. We can do this because the replace function here will not make any changes if the QUOT value isn't found in the string. We can run this statement and see the results at the bottom. We can see it shows 257,925 rows updated, which matches our earlier count. The time taken is 6.9 seconds. Alright, so that's method number one with a runtime of 6.9 seconds. Method two is the same, except we'll add a WHERE clause. We only want to update records that have this QUOT value, so perhaps we can speed it up by adding a WHERE clause to exclude other rows. We can use the inString function for this, and if the value returned is greater than zero, the string has been found. We can run the query and check the output panel. It also shows 257925 rows updated and a runtime of 8.5 seconds. So we can see it's actually a little slower than method one. If you're trying this on your own data set, you'll likely get different run times, and this method may even be faster than method one. So don't discount this method just yet. What if we update the data in batches? Rather than update all 257,000 records at once, we could update the data in batches of say 1,000 records at a time. Here's the code in MySQL to do this. There are a few steps involved. We first create a table that contains the IDs of all the records to update, which are the 257,000 rows that meet our criteria. We also want to create a table that stores the records in the current batch. This is an empty table at the moment. We then create a couple of indexes on these tables so that later statements can find the data quickly. Next, we insert 1,000 records into the current batch table. We do this by using limit 1000. This syntax is different in other vendors, but the same concept applies. Each of these steps has taken less than a second so far. Next we have an update statement, which performs the update in the main comments table. However, we join to the current batch table, so that only the IDs in this current batch table are impacted by the update statement. This update statement only updates 1,000 rows and takes 2.9 seconds to run. Then we remove the IDs from the IDs to update table that were updated in the current batch because we've just done the update on them and we want to ignore them. This step takes less than a second to run. Next, we remove all of the data from the current batch table. We repeat these steps from inserting into the current batch down to deleting this data multiple times so that all of the data is eventually updated. I'll select these statements and run them all. We can see that most are pretty quick, and one step here takes about three seconds. We'll need to repeat this until all of the records are updated, which depends on your batch size and the number of records in the table. We can estimate the time taken based on our data. A batch size of 1,000 and 257,000 records to update, and each batch takes three seconds to run, giving an estimate of 771 seconds, or about 13 minutes. This is much slower than the other two methods. You could improve this by containing it in a loop to check if there are records remaining, so you only need to execute it once and it loops automatically. You could also adjust the batch sizes to see if it runs faster. But this is another method that could work for you. Method number four is similar to number three, but all in a single batch. This involves creating a temporary table to hold all of the IDs we want to update. It's a temporary table, so it gets automatically deleted at the end of our session. We can run this statement and it takes 4.9 seconds to run. 
Next, we'll add an index on the ID column so our update statement runs faster, which takes 0.5 seconds. Next, we'll update the comments table and join to this temporary table. This means only the IDs that meet our criteria will be updated. We can run this statement and see that it takes 6.7 seconds. So in total, this method takes 12.1 seconds. Compared to our other methods, it's a little slower. The final method we'll look at is using the create table statement. We're going to run a create table statement that creates a new table using the results of a select query. The select query will get the data from our comments table. However, the select query will return the updated data, not the original data. In this example, we'll return the results of the replace function on the text value and not the text value itself. We can run this statement and see that it takes 13.1 seconds to run and includes many more rows. This is every row in the original table. This method is a little slower than the others. Let's see how they all compare. We saw five different methods in this video and here are the run times for each of them. They range from the basic update which took 6.9 seconds all the way up to the batch method which took 771 seconds or about 13 minutes. The goal of this video was to show you different methods of updating millions of rows. You'll get different run times if you use a different database, tables and update statements. You might even find that a different method is faster than my experience. So if you're running an update statement on a large table, try one of these methods to see what works for you. You can find links to the SQL scripts used in the description below so you can copy and paste and modify them as needed. If you want to learn more about database design and SQL, visit my website at databasestar.com. If you like this video, consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching.